Good Saturday morning. I'm meteorologist Ryan Hoke with today's edition of the Hokey Video Blog. Hope you've been surviving through the gloomy skies and the rain that we've had over the past day or so. Thankfully, the rain is on its way out. The clouds will take a little more time, but all in all, we've got a fairly decent but cooler forecast on the way for the rest of the weekend. Let's discuss first our Hokey weather fact of the day. We're talking about a belated birthday here. The main radar that the National Weather Service operates for the Metro Louisville area here, it's out of Fort Knox, went into service back on November 29th, 1994. This is the radar that powers the Storm Tracker 3D radar here. All the weather apps that you have on your phone that have a radar on it, all that comes from this central point right here in Fort Knox. Of course, inside this golf ball looking thing here is actually a radar dish, much like the dish that you would have on your house if that's how you get your TV signal. So, we've had this radar now for 20 years. It's called a WSR. Dash 88D because the technology behind it was developed in 1988, went to service here in 94. And you may ask the question, what are we doing with a 20 year old radar? My goodness, that's old hardware. Well, it's not like your computer because they do switch out hardware on this radar site uh, from time to time, and especially the software. Software upgrades happen at least every year uh, for this radar. So quite a few things have been developed since then, but we've still got the good old radar dish in there that's now 20 years old. But that'd be interesting to discuss with you because we have been using the radar quite a bit over the past 24 hours with this rainfall moving through. I want to call your attention to what happened up here toward uh, Lawrence Jackson and Jennings County this morning. Had quite a bit of heavy rainfall moving through. Look at all those reds there. Pretty much uh, got C Bedford, Bedford, I should say, Mitchell, Seymour, and North Vernon all soaked up there this morning for a time. Thankfully, that's moving out of here. Just some lighter showers associated with the cold front itself over our southeastern counties and downstate Kentucky, especially over toward uh, Campbellsville and into Columbia at this time. Let's give you the bigger picture here because we'll, you'll see this cold front moving through the area. And it just passed through Bowling Green. Watch the temperature here. 61, 58, 57, 51, 50. Yeah, that's how much it dropped here over the past uh, few hours here. This is a three-hour loop, so you can see definitely that there has been some changes. Lexington did the same thing when the cold front moved through there. Now they're in the mid-40s. They were in to the mid-50s earlier. Somerset, still not through to where the front is yet because they're still in the mid-50s at this time. So this cold air continues tr uh, moving on into the area behind this front. Notice how we do have 30s breaking out in portions of central and southwest Indiana at this time. I think we'll see that as we go toward tonight. The 40s, that's what we'll be seeing today, though, in Metro Louisville. We've been able to get the visibility better now that the cold front is through the area. I was able to sweep out some of that lower-level moisture. Whew, thank goodness, because I think we were all getting tired of uh, those cloud ceilings uh, below 1,000 feet and the visibility under 2 miles there. That was starting to drive everybody nuts, especially when you're out driving at night with that rainfall. It doesn't help any at all. So if you're heading out to light up St. Matthew's at Brown Park this afternoon and evening, you'll still need to bundle up for temperatures in the 40s, but at least we don't have the rain in the forecast there. If you're heading out to Bardstown Road Aglow, same story, those cool temperatures in there with a lack of rain chances. Here's how it moves through today on Futurecast, 46 by 1 o'clock. may see a degree or two of an increase this afternoon, but I think we're going to be mainly steady in the mid-40s until tonight when we drop into the lower 40s, and then the 30s come into play after 8 o'clock or so, and we will be seeing partly cloudy skies. I do think the clouds break up somewhat. Areas that see less cloud cover, especially up towards southern Indiana where you see those 20s, will drop more than those that do have somewhat of a cloud cover. So I think 31 is a pretty good bet here as we move throughout tomorrow morning. Now as we go throughout your Sunday, ah, finally, mostly sunny skies. We'll have a few clouds filtering in. There'll be high clouds, but Compared to what we've had over the previous days, it's going to be wonderful out there, sky condition-wise. Temperature-wise, we're only going to be topping out in the mid-40s, so a pretty cool day on tap for us here across Kentucky. Yeah, then we get another cold front in here as we move throughout your Monday. Could trigger just a few isolated showers as we go throughout your Monday afternoon, your Monday night. This was the system that we talked about might put down a few snowflakes, but at this point, I think it's going to be too warm for that. Just a couple of rain showers at this point, folks. Kind of a move along here, nothing to see uh, sort of situation there. 
Now, let's talk about what happens as we go throughout uh, the rest of the week here. We will have that cold shot. You can see it up there as we go toward Monday night. There it is right there on the uh, GFS model that you're seeing here. Kind of an area of high pressure moving in across the uh, upper Great Lakes. It moves on through, and we do get some colder weather for a time as we go throughout the central part of the week. You can see how that moves on through Tuesday, Wednesday. But look what happens by Thursday. We begin to break out of this pattern. The cold air shunted off toward the Appalachian Mountains. We get more of a southerly flow in here. Our temperatures have a hard time to recover because it's hard to get this kind of cold air out of here. So we'll still be in the upper 40s by Thursday afternoon, but by Friday I think we're squarely at 50. We will be at the edge, though, of this warm-up out here to our west, so I don't think we're going to be taking full advantage of all the warmth that you see going on in the plain states. So we might be able to reach 60 by late next weekend, but I think that's the best we'll be able to do. After this point, a lot of questions, not a whole lot of answers, but some conjecture. A lot of big words there. Uh, but as we go throughout uh, the middle portion of December and beyond, you know, we've got this warm up that we're talking about for the next weekend, and that'll definitely put us up to about December oh, 14th or 15th. So we're looking at a warm period there. Afterward, I think we can continue the warmth, but it just won't be as strong. We'll have some cool, cool shots to erode some of that. And then as we head throughout Christmas and beyond, there are signals that we could be seeing a turn for the colder, but not excessively cold. Snow and ice, could that be on the table? Not for sure yet, but when you've got a change up in the pattern like that, that's definitely you know a possibility. So we'll have to watch that. Not a whole lot of answers again on this, so we will be keeping track of it. I know a lot of people are wondering about that Christmas white snow chance around the area. Will we have a white Christmas? Well, can't tell you at this point, but I think the answer will come better into focus once we get through this warm snap next weekend. We're getting into the time of year, of course, and we start looking at the long-range data for snow. We've already had some snow this year, of course, this season, I should say, but, you know, we're getting into the bulk of uh, the winter season as we go throughout the latter portion of the December. Meteorological winter started as we went through December 1st, so we really start looking for snow after about that point, but the real good snows that we like to see here usually start around the January time frame. For those who are snow lovers, for those that aren't snow lovers, well, this isn't your time of year. Sorry, folks. All right, I'm meteorologist Ryan Hoke. That's it for today's Hokey video blog. Hope you'll join us again tomorrow for Wave 3 News Sunrise starting at 5 a.m.